Hello friends, I welcome you on Baiju's exam prep, India's most comprehensive preparation platform for all the engineers. All the candidates who are joining me live, just quickly confirm your presence in the comment section and tell me whether my audio visual quality, everything is clear so that we can start with the session. Till you are going to report me about the audio and visual quality, let me just brief you what is the ideal duration and what is the agenda for today's session. The ideal duration for today's session is going to be approximately 1.5 hours. And in this session, we are going to discuss important topics, concepts with the help of the questions related to your subject power system and we will be focusing on fault and protection. We will be focusing on fault and protection. Already we have completed two sessions in this series for power system. The first one was transmission and distribution and the second one was about the stability and load flow that uh, we have conducted yesterday. So, all the candidates uh, just quickly confirm your presence in the comment section and just quickly hit the like button, just like the session, share it with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to Baiju's exam prep so that you do not miss any of the important session. So, everybody just uh, tell me in the comment section, shall we start? Yes, everybody. Some of you may be joining me for the first time, so there is a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ashutosh, as you can see on the screen. I have 11 plus years of teaching experience, completed MTech from ITBHU in 2010, written a couple of books and these are my areas of expertise. Before we start the session, a very important information for all of you who are seriously preparing for GATE 2023 because Baiju's exam prep is bringing one of the most awaited session for GATE 2023, that is Maha Marathon. It is going to be started from 3rd of January. Within just 12 days, every single day is going to be very crucial because all your subject, all your syllabus is going to be covered within these 12 days for electrical, electronics, instrumentation and computer science. So, subscribe to Baiju's exam prep if you have not subscribed. Okay. The second important part that you must, uh, must be following is the series related to the previous year questions. We are running a previous year question series uh, where we are covering 2018, 19, 20, 21 and 22. The last five years questions we are going to discuss along with the concept. So, already a lot of subjects have been completed. So, if you have not attended these sessions, attend these sessions. These are going to be very important because with the faculty is going to give you the conceptual base for any question. It is going to be, it may be repeated in the uh, 2023 also because questions are not repeated but definitely the concepts are going to be repeated across five years. Now everybody's favorite faculty that is Dheeraj Sardana sir is going to conduct a mega workshop uh, on 1st of January that is tomorrow 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon. It is going to be a strategy to be top 1% in GATE 2024. So all the candidates who are planning for GATE 2024 and how you can secure best rank, <coughs> Dheeraj sir is going to tell you. For attending this workshop, you have to get yourself registered on the Baiju's exam prep app. Okay. So, just get yourself registered for this workshop, 12.30 p.m. tomorrow, that is 1st of January. Now, the last information is about the gate and engineering services test series, which you can avail on Baiju's exam prep app. You can get unlimited access to the full length mock subject test. The link is given in the description. Some of the important features of this test series is you will be getting 60 plus tests covering gate and ESC, detailed mock analysis, virtual scientific calculator, 400 plus practice questions, all India open mocks and obviously it is curated by one of the gate experts in respective field. So, everybody now uh, let us start with the first question. So, you all are comfortable now, shall we start? See the first question. Now, it is a theoretical question, but because it is important for this year, that is why I have included this. Bakol's relay is used for, obviously you must be aware that it is used for the protection of transformers. 
Now, protection of transformers for internal faults, internal faults only. So, Buckholz relay is going to protect the transformers against the internal faults. One of the most unique feature of Buckholz relay is that this is the only relay which protects even before the fault is occurred. When the fault is occurring, it is it, it protects the transformer from the incipient fault. Incipient fault means when the fault is occurring. And this is the only relay which detects the fault even before the fault has occurred. Just give me one moment. Is it clear everybody? So, what is going to be the correct choice? Protection of a transformer against all internal faults, protection of a transformer against external faults. So, this is wrong. Protection of a transformer against both internal and external faults. This is wrong. This is wrong. So, what is the correct answer? This. Let us see the next question. More relay has an Rx characteristic depicted by. Now, you know that the more relay Rx characteristic is a circle which is passing through the origin, which is passing through the origin. This is the Rx characteristic of a Mohr relay. Now, there is one simple concept here. The concept is if the Rx characteristic lies in the first and the third quadrant both, then it is non-directional. Rx characteristic, if it lies both in the first and third quadrant, then you are getting a non-directional relay. But if the Rx characteristic lies either first or third quadrant only, then you are getting directional relay. And this is the reason we say that more relay is inherently, inherently directional relay, inherently directional relay because it is lying only in the first quadrant. So, it is a circle passing through the origin. The last year 2022 also there was a question related to the more relay that was related to the offset more relay. So, basically offset more relay what is happening? Let me add one is here. When there is a loss of excitation in the generator to protect the alternator against the loss of excitation, we are using the offset more relay. Offset more relay is basically a relay whose Rx characteristic is shifted from the origin like this and it is shifted because when there is a loss of excitation, the impedance seen by the relay falls within this circle and that is how the relay protects the alternator against the loss of excitation. This is offset more relay. Last year there was a question on this. Offset more relay is basically shifted from origin shifted from origin. Is it clear everybody? Just tell me in the comment section are you able to follow this or not? See the next question. A three phase delta y connected 
300 mega volt ampere, 33 kilo volt oblique, 11 kilo volt transformer is protected by simple differential relaying scheme. The CT ratio on the primary side is 500 is to 5 and that on the secondary side is 2000 is to 5. Calculate the relay current setting for false drawing up to 200 percent of the rated current. How we are defining the relay setting? Relay setting is de defined as the pickup current divided by the rated ROC current. Now, what is this rated ROC current and what is this pickup current? So, let us have a understanding before we solve this question directly. So, what is the basic protection scheme? Let us understand, then you will have a better understanding of this, all these terms. This is the bus, this is the line needs to be protected, okay, and this is the circuit wear, circuit breaker. This is the circuit breaker plunger, and uh, this is the trip circuit coil. And this is the battery connected to the trip circuit. This is the trip circuit. This is the trip circuit. Now, this is the plunger connected to the trip circuit. Now, this line is going to have the fault current. Now, if you want to deal with the uh, detection of fault, so, you want to deal with the fault current or some lesser value of current. Obviously, you want to deal with the lesser value of current. Why? Because fault current is going to be very high. So, if you want to measure that current, if you want to compare that current, if you want to take some decision making, then it is difficult to operate with the fault current. So, what we do? We transform this current into a smaller value by using a current transformer. So, this is our current transformer. Now, this is secondary of the CT and this line itself behave as the primary of the CT because you know for the current transformer the primary number of turns are very less and the secondary number of turns are very high. Okay? Now, this secondary of the CT is going to be connected to the relay operating coil like this. This is relay operating coil. This is relay operating coil. In short, it is called as ROC. So, the basic idea is this fall current will be reflected as this fall current will be reflected as current in the ROC. Yes or no? When this ROC current will flow in this relay operating coil, it will be having some MMF. So, the ampere turns of the ROC, if it is enough to generate a force, that is the operating force in this direction, what will happen? This trip circuit is going to be closed and current is going to be flowing in this trip circuit. Current flowing in this trip circuit will cause a force so that the circuit breaker contacts will start opening so that the circuit can be disconnected for the given fault condition. This is the basic protection scheme. This is the basic protection scheme. This is the basic protection scheme. Is it clear everybody? <coughs> Are you able to follow this? So, understand the relation between the relay and the circuit breaker. So, let us have a little fun. Okay, are you ready? 
So, how many of you have seen this movie, Jungle Book, The Jungle Book? There was a cartoon movie, Jungle Book, written by Rudyard Kripling. So, the moral story just within two minutes, I will tell you what is the moral of this story. The moral of the story that there is a child, a newborn child, whose parents die in some accident and uh, that child actually start living with the wolves in the jungle, okay. So, he was being brought up by the wolves in the forest. Now, there is one tiger in the forest which always want to kill this small boy because he was thinking that he has something, some powers which can destroy this uh, forest. So, that tiger wants, always wants to kill the boy. Now, there is an assistant to that tiger whose name is Tawaki, it is a hyena. So, all the time, the major contribution, the main work of hyena is to identify what is the location of Mowgli, the name of the child was Mowgli in the forest. And every time he is running to the tiger and saying, Sher Khan, Sher Khan, Mowgli is there, Mowgli is there, Mowgli is there. So, I am identifying three characters. The first one is Sher Khan. Second one is Tabaki and third one is Mowgli. Sher Khan is the tiger who always wants to kill the boy. This is the boy, a small boy and Tabaki is a hyena. Okay. So, in our power system, this Sher Khan is actually circuit breaker. This Tabaki is actually relay and this Mowgli is actually a fault. So, what is the relation between them? The relation between them is that all the time this Tabaki is going to tell Sher Khan where is Mowgli and the same way the relay is going to tell the circuit breaker all the time where is fault. So, what is the main purpose of having relay in our protection system? It locates the fault. It locates the fault. Lot of books on power system, they are writing that relay actually detects the fault. Obviously, it detects the fault, but after detecting what it does, it locates the fault. It tells the circuit breaker that this is the point where fault has occurred. Now, you have to take the action. Is it clear everybody? Are you able to follow this? Just tell me yes or no. Is it clear? Now you understand this relay operating coil current, when this relay operating coil current becomes more than a predetermined value, this is called as pickup value. This is called as pickup value. So, when it becomes more than the pickup value of the current, the relay operates. The relay operates. Otherwise, relay does not operate. Is it clear, everybody? Now, understand about the relay setting. What is the purpose of having relay setting? Let us understand. Suppose this is your this is your primary of the CT, this is secondary of the CT, okay, and this is your relay operating coil, okay. So the relay operating coil is going to have number of tappings something like this and depending upon the requirement, these tappings can be selected to decide what is the pickup current because you do not want all the time the same pickup current to be followed by the circuit breaker, yes or no, so, oh sorry relay. So, it may be 60 percent, 
it may be 80 percent, it may be 100 percent of the tapping, it may be 120 percent, 140 percent and whatsoever. I am just giving you one idea. So, by changing the number of turns of the relay operating coil, this is relay operating coil, you can decide what is going to be the pickup current. So, we are defining relay setting as pickup current divided by rated ROC current, yes or no? So, basically by deciding the relay setting, what you are deciding? You are deciding the pickup current because pickup current is going to be now relay setting multiplied by rated ROC current. So, by deciding the number of turns of the ROC, you are deciding what is going to be the pickup current. Good afternoon, Ashok. Uh, yes, very difficult name, Mridu Paban. Hi, how are you? Is it clear, everybody? You understand the logic behind the relay setting or not? Just tell me. Some of the books, they are writing current setting also. Instead of relay setting, they are writing current setting. So, you should not get confused, you understand the logic. Now, understand, because let us complete this picture so that you understand it better. The next term we are having is plug setting multiplier. Plug setting multiplier. In short, it is called as PSM. So, plug setting multiplier, it basically tells you the severity of the fault. It tells you the severity of the fault, okay. So, basically, if you want to know that how much dangerous, how much severe your fault is, then what you are going to do? You are going to define a metric that is plug setting multiplier as fault current. divided by pickup current, yes or no? Suppose there is a sample of 100 students and I want to know who is the most intelligent, the best student in the class. So, what I will do? I will take a test. In that test, I will see what, what are the marks you are getting and with the reference value, I will compare your marks. So, that reference value is pickup current. If the current is more than the pickup current, then the relay will operate. But how much more dangerous it is, it gives me the ratio of fault current and pickup current. When you are dealing with the relay, you always want this fault current in the primary or secondary. You want it in the primary or secondary. You want it in the secondary because secondary fault current, CT secondary fault current is going to be a smaller value. But the question is going to give you the fault current in the primary fault current in the primary, sorry, you want it in the secondary. So, it is going to be secondary. But in the question, he is not going to give you the CT secondary fault current, he is going to give you the primary fault current. So, what you do? Listen very carefully. The fault current in the secondary you can write in terms of primary fault current how you always write the ct ratio as greater than 1 you always write the ct ratio as greater than 1 whatever uh, value is given you always write it in terms of greater than 1 okay now Fault current in the secondary is going to be a smaller value and primary fault current is going to be a higher value. So, if you want a smaller value from a higher value, what you will do? You will divide that higher value by something which is greater than 1. So, divide it by CT ratio. And you remember that CT ratio you are defining as more than 1. So, you are getting a smaller value for field current in the secondary by dividing it by CT ratio. Now, you can rewrite this equation for plug setting multiplier, it is going to be primary fault current, 
primary fault current divided by CT ratio and what is this pickup current? Already we have defined the pickup current as relay setting into rated ROC current, so you can write it here. Relay setting multiplied by rated ROC current. This is the complete expression for flux setting multiplier. And it is very obvious to understand that if flux setting multiplier is greater than 1, then relay operates. If plug setting multiplier is less than 1, the relay does not operate. And if plug setting multiplier is equal to 1, then relay is on the verge of operation, about to operate. Is it clear? Everybody just tell me yes or no in the comment section. Are you able to follow this? So, this was the idea behind the plug setting multiplier, current setting or relay setting. Now, you can do this problem. Okay. Let me add one more page here. Now, if you read the question carefully, what he is saying is, the relay current setting you have to find, the relay current setting you have to find for false drawing up to 200 percent of the rated current. So, the first thing you have to do is you have to find the, what is the rated current. Now, if you see, 30 MVA, 33 oblique, 11 kilo volt and you will be talking about the secondary of the CT because whenever we are dealing with the relay operating coil, it is connected to the secondary of the CT. Yes or no? So, the rated current if you are finding in the primary, that is the line current, it is going to be 30 MVA divided by 33 kV is going to be the primary side, line side, root 3, 33, 10 to the power 3. So, just solve this and tell me what is the value you are getting for this. As for my reference, you must be getting 524.86, 524.86. Now, this is the rated current in the primary side. So, what is going to be the fault current? Fault current, he is saying 2 times the rated current. So, it is 2 times what is the rated current 524.86. So, it comes out to be, just solve this, 1049.72. Confirm this value 1049.72 ampere. Because fault current higher value is going to be in the primary and relay you will be uh, dealing with the CT secondary. Okay. Now, this this is the fault current you understand from this diagram this is the fault current in the line but for the relay setting what you want you want this current which is reflected by this current transformer so you want a smaller value how you are going to find that this is fault current in the primary so, what is going to be secondary fault current? Fault current in the CT secondary. It is going to be 1049.72 and we want a smaller value. So, what is the CT ratio given? What is the CT ratio given? And we have to take it. Uh, 
CT ratio on the primary side okay this is for the delta y transformer so this is the this is the primary of the transformer okay you understand actually there are two transformers this is the transformer itself and the transformer primary connected with the line you have to reflect it to the ct secondary so this is the this is the ratio which we have to use ct connected to the primary side because transformer primary is going to have the line current. So, this is going to be 5 upon 500. We have to divide it by a higher value to get a smaller value. So, 500 is to 5, we are writing as 5 upon 500. So, it becomes 10.4972 amperes. <coughs> Just tell me, is it clear? Are you comfortable with this? Why we have taken this CT, not this CT ratio? This is the transformer CT, this is the transformer CT connected to the secondary of the transformer. When we are connecting it with the line, we are dealing with the primary of the main transformer, okay. That is the reason. Now, if it is a delta Y transformer, then we are going to use a star delta for the CT connections. You understand that? For delta y, we have to use the opposite, star delta, okay, or y delta. So, it means the primary side, the primary side, the CT is connected in a star. So, if it is connected in a star, so this secondary fault current in the CT is going to be the, phase current and line current are same. So, this is 10.4972. And what is the rated rated current in the CT? That is 5. So now you can write the relay setting as or current setting as 10.4972 divided by 5. Somewhere around 2.09 amperes you will be getting. <coughs> is it clear everybody? This is the differential protection scheme for the three phase transformers. So, if it is a star star, no problem. If the transformer is a star star, then CTs are going to be a star star. If it is delta delta, then CT connection is also delta delta. If it is a star delta, then it should be delta star. If it is delta star, then it is a star delta. Okay. Are you able to follow this? See the next question. The neutral of 10 MV 11 kilovolt alternator is earthed to a resistance of 5 ohms. The earth fault relay is set to operate at 0 0.75. The CTs have a ratio of 1000 is to 5. What percentage of alternator winding is protected? Now, what is the logic behind this? Let me just give you one concept here. When you are protecting the alternator, what happens? Suppose this is your one phase, one phase of the alternator. This is the neutral. Suppose this is A phase, okay. Listen, listen. Now, this time, this time we are connecting the neutral directly to the ground. So, this is solidly grounded. This is solidly grounded. Now, if the fault is occurring here, suppose this is the first case, if the fault is occurring at 50 percent of the winding, second case and if the fault is occurring at 20 percent, this is the third case. Now, suppose I have to write IF1, the total winding voltage coming, this is going to be V phase 
and its winding impedance is going to be Zw. So, IF1 is going to be V phase divided by Zw. What is going to be IF2? Because 50 percent of the winding fault is occurring, so only 50 percent of the voltage will be coming across and the impedance will also be again 50 percent only. Okay. So, again it is V phase upon Zw. Similarly, for the third case, if the fault is at 20 percent, this is 100 percent, this is 50 percent of the winding fault is occurring and this is 20 percent. Now, the voltage and winding impedance both will be 20 percent only. So, it is V phase upon Zw. Now, you see here whether the fault is occurring at 100 percent, 50 percent or 20 percent all the time, the fault currents are going to be same. All the time the fault currents are going to be same. So, you say if the fault current is more than the pickup value of the current, then the relay will operate and the circuit breaker will take the action. It means 100 percent of the winding is protected. So, if it is a solidly grounded neutral, then 100 percent of the winding is protected. Now, let us take the case when you have some neutral uh, maybe impedance, reactance or resistance. Suppose some resistance is there, not directly grounded. Again, this is Zw, this is V phase and again suppose fault is occurring in three cases, 100 percent, 50 percent, and 20 percent. Now, if you write the fault current in first case, it is simply V phase upon Zw plus Rn, but Rn is generally very, very high in comparison to Zw. Winding impedance, it is going to be a smaller value, neutral, neutral resistance is going to be a very large value. So, you can ignore the winding impedance and you can simply write it as V phase upon Rn. Let us take the second case fault current IF2. Now, it is 50 percent, so voltage across will be 50 percent, winding impedance will be 50 percent and this is Rn. Again, Zw is a smaller, very, very small in comparison to Rn. So, now IF2 becomes 0 0.5 V phase upon Rn approximately. Third case IF3 only 20 percent voltage coming across, 20 percent winding impedance Rn and it is neglected winding impedance. So, 0 0.2 V phase upon Rn. Now, if you observe the more you are going towards the neutral, the fall current is reducing, fall current is reducing. It means there is a possibility depending upon the location of fault, the fall current may become such low that it is less than the pickup current. So, even though there is a fault in the winding very near to the neutral terminal, but still the relay is not operating. Why? Because the fall current is not that much, not more than the pickup value. In that case, some percent of the winding of the alternator is unprotected. It is not uh, easy, but uh, it is rare, but uh, still it may happen. So, if the fault lies within that unprotected region, then the relay is not going to operate. So, we have to take some buffer for that. Now, suppose we are saying Suppose we are saying this is the fault current and this is the x times x percentage of the portion which is unprotected. Now, you tell me what is going to be the fault current. This is going to be x v phase and this is going to be x z w plus r n. Now, this is neglected. So, you can write x v phase upon r n. 
if the relay has to operate for the limiting case it should be the pickup current it should be the pickup current so you can find out what is the percentage of the winding unprotected as iprn upon vph this is the formula you have to use in this question okay so x is going to be what is ip pickup current now pickup current is he is saying is 0 0.75 but this is a smaller value you have to change it to the higher value okay to the primary side so multiply it with the larger value so it is 1000 upon 5 what is rn 5 ohms and what is the phase voltage phase voltage is going to be 11 upon root 3 this is 1000 just tell me what is the value of x you are getting what is the value of x you are getting you must be getting somewhere 0 0.118 are you getting this 0 0.118 <laughs> But he is not asking, he is not asking because x is unprotected, he is not asking the unprotected percentage, he is asking the protected percentage, so it is going to be 1 minus x. If you solve this, I think you must be getting b as the correct option. Everybody is getting that, just tell me yes or no in the comment section. Yes, Ashok. Perfect. See the next question. In a three step distance protection, the reach of the three zones of the relay at the beginning of the first line typically extends up to. Now, what is this three zone protection of distance relays? So, let me add some point here. Now suppose this is the situation, suppose there are three sections like that, okay. Now I am going to connect the circuit breakers and the relays. Suppose this is bus number 1, okay, this is bus number 1, this is bus number 2, bus number 3, this is bus number 4. Now, suppose we are talking about this relay, this is relay R12, this is R23, this is R34 and so on. Now understand, if we are talking about the three zone of protection for relay R12, so how we are defining these three zones, let us understand. The first zone we are taking only up to 80 percent of this section 1 and 2, not 100 percent. Why we cannot take 100 percent? Let us understand. Suppose it is extended up to the 100 percent. Now, we, if we have a fault here or if we have a fault here, then this relay is not going to be able to differentiate whether the fault lies within section 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 and the relay will operate. This is what we do not want. Because if the fault is occurring here, then R23 should be operating now. The relay which is nearest to the fault, it should operate first on the generator side. So that is the reason we do not extend it up to the 100%, we only take it up to the 
एट्टी परसेंट देन सेकेंड जोन सेकेंड जोन मीन्स आफ्टर गिविंग सम डिले बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू मेक इट एज अ बैकअप प्रोटेक्शन फॉर दिस रीजन एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ सेक्शन वन एंड टू द प्राइमरी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग फॉर अ फॉल्ट इज आर वन टू ओके बट इट इज गोइंग टू एक्ट एज अ बैकअप प्रोटेक्शन फॉर अदर सेक्शन तो रिमेनिंग ट्वेंटी परसेंट इफ द फॉल्ट इज अकरिंग एंड अप टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द नेक्स्ट सेक्शन दिस इज द टाइम डीले इंटेंशनल टाइम डीले फॉर द रिले ऑपरेशन सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी जोन वन फॉर रिले आर वन टू दिस इज जोन टू ऑफ रिले आर वन टू एंड देन थर्ड जोन कवरिंग द फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी परसेंट of next section 3 and 4 so this is r3 r1 the more time delay is there so this is how we do this three zone protection for every relay for r23 also r34 also then for these relays also this is r21 this is r32 this is r43 okay for example if for R two three I have to make so it is going to be something like this. Eighty percent of section two three, eighty percent of section two three. Second zone twenty percent of the remaining two three and fifty percent of next section three and four. Third zone fifty percent of three and four and minimum twenty percent of next section. Now this is going to be first zone for relay. Two three, second zone for relay. Two three, and third zone for relay. Two three. This is how we are making the three zone protection. Okay. So this idea you have to take in your mind when you are selecting the answer. Hundred percent of the first line cannot be the answer. Okay. Hundred percent of the line cannot be the Answer: Fifty percent is going to be very less, so only B and C options are remaining. B says eighty percent of the first line, fifty percent of the second line, and twenty percent of the third line. This goes correct. Eighty percent of the first line, twenty percent of the second line. This is incorrect. So B is the correct option. Is it clear, everybody? Are you able to follow this? is it clear see the next question it is about the plug setting multiplier and time multiplier setting which already we have discussed the statement one says for a given plug setting multiplier if the tms is increased then the relay operating time is increased we'll check whether it is correct or not second it says tms can be increased by increasing the distance between the relay Context. So we will first understand plug setting multiplier. We have understood. So we will now understand what is time multiplier setting. That is TMS. Okay. So let me add some pages here. now see how we are defining the time multiplier setting time multiplier setting that is tms it is given as actual operating time of the relay so this is t operation actual divided by the operating time for tms is equal to 1 if there is no grading for time If there is no grading of time, TMS is one. 
So, this is operating time for TMS is equal to 1. So, this is how this time multiplier setting is defined. But what is the basic idea of this? Now, see if you remember the basic protection scheme we have discussed. Yes. Now, this plunger has to move to close the contact of the trip circuit. So, there will be some time required for the relay operation, some time required for the relay operation. Now, it means the operating time of the relay operation, time of operation of the relay, it depends on two things. Number one, the distance between relay contacts and second the speed at which this distance is traveled that will define the time now velocity distance and time relation you can understand now understand this, the actual operating time of the relay you can write as TMS multiplied by operating time of the relay for TMS 1. Now operating time of the relay for TMS 1, this is going to be a constant value. Once you design the relay, it is going to be a constant value. So TMS is the grading for time. So, if you are increasing the TMS, the time of operation of the relay is going to be increasing. And if you are reducing the TMS, time of operation of the relay is reducing. This is one part of our discussion. Now, you tell me one thing. If I have to draw the characteristic, okay, this is the time of operation of the relay. And this is the plug setting multiplier. Plug setting multiplier gives you what? The severity of the fault, how severe your fault is. So, if the severity of the fault is less, if the severity of the fault is less, then time of operation is high. If the severity increases, then the time of operation should be reducing. So, this is the characteristic between the time of operation of the relay and the severity of fault or plug setting multiplier okay now this is suppose tms1 for a particular time multiplier setting for another time multiplier setting suppose we have this tms2 similarly for another time multiplier setting suppose we have tms Now, for a given severity of fault, for a given severity of fault, this is going to give you, TMS1 is giving you T1 time of operation, TMS2 is giving you T2, TMS3 is giving you T3. From the time axis, very easily you can understand that T3 is greater than T2 is greater than T1. And you know that time of operation of the relay is directly proportional to the TMS. So, can I say TMS 3 is going to be greater than TMS 2 is greater than TMS 1? Yes or no? Now, you check statement 1. For a given plug setting multiplier, if the TMS is increased, then the relay operating time is increased. This is the correct statement as per the characteristic we have got. Second, it says that TMS can be increased by increasing the distance between the relay contacts. This is also correct. If you go from your home to somewhere, if the distance is more for a given velocity, then the time taken is going to be more. So, both the statements are correct, but statement 2 is not a correct reasoning for a statement 1. So, A cannot be the answer, B is the answer. Both the statements are correct, but a statement 2 
does not give a correct reasoning for a statement 1. Is it clear? See the next question. The overcurrent relays for the line protection and loads connected at the buses are shown in the figure. This is the figure. Okay. The relays are IDMT in nature, inverse uh, definite minimum time relay. The characteristic is given with this equation. Already they have given you the relation between the time of operation and the plug setting multiplier. The maximum and the minimum fault current at bus B are 2500 ampere respectively assuming the time multiplier setting and plug setting for relay RB to be uh, 0.1 and 5 ampere respectively. What is the operating time of relay connected at B? What is the operating time of the relay connected at B? So, time multiplier setting is already given, yes or no? Time multiplier setting is given. You have to find the plug setting multiplier basically and put this value here and you will be getting the answer. So, how you are finding the plug setting multiplier already we have discussed I think. Okay, you can do it here itself. Uh, okay, let me do it here. Plug setting multiplier, how you are writing? Write the fault current. Fault current divided by the pickup current. So, what is the fault current? The fault current, maximum fault current is 2000. So, 2000 is going to be the maximum fault current. Now, this fault current to be divided by the pickup current for which the relay is going to be operated and that pickup current actually uh, is given as 5 ampere, but you know that 5 ampere for the plug setting if it is given, it is going to be the current in the CT secondary, but you are talking about the fault current in the primary, it is a higher value. So, this 5, this 5 you have to uh, you have to translate it to the CT primary, but the CT ratio is not given. So, let me give you some CT ratio. Suppose it is CT ratio is given. There is some typing mistake here, I think. So, it, it is suppose 500 is to 5. 500 is to 5. So, this is going to be because we want it a higher value 500 upon 5. So, this is going to be what? It is going to be 4. Plug setting multiplier you will be getting as 4. Just put this value of 4 here. Time multiplier setting is given. It is 0 0.1. It is 0 0.1. Just solve this and you will be getting the time of operation as per my reference. You must be getting somewhere around 0 0.497 seconds. 0 0.497 seconds. Just tell me in the comment section, are you able to follow this? Is it clear? Okay, is it clear? If the inductance and the capacitance of a power system network up to a circuit breaker location are given, the value of the shunt resistor across the circuit breaker required for critical damping of the restriking voltage is. So, let me give you some idea about this. Now, basically what happens, when the contacts of the circuit breaker are about to open, 
something like this. Suppose this is the fixed contact, this is the moving contact. Now, there is arc between the contacts of the circuit breaker. arc in the medium. It is like arc current. Okay. Now, this arc has to be quenched. It has to be interrupted. Then only circuit breaker is going to be satisfactorily disconnect the unhealthy or faulty part of the system for the rest of the system. So, we have to interrupt this arc. For interrupting this arc, basically we have two methods for arc interruption. What is that? One is high resistance method. And one is low resistance method. So, high resistance method basically somehow we try to increase the resistance of the arc so that the arc can be interrupted satisfactorily. On the second hand, for the low resistance method, we are not intentionally trying to increase the arc resistance. Rather, what we are doing, we are interrupting the arc at the natural current 0. If this is a sinusoidal quantity, the current in the arc is also going to be sinusoidal. Yes or no? So, there is a time when the current goes through the natural current is 0, if the arc is interrupted exactly at this point, the energy in the arc is going to be minimum and the arc is going to be satisfactorily interrupted and it will not re-strike. It will not re-strike. It will not come again. But the problem is how to exactly interrupt the arc at this natural current 0? It is easy to say that a group of mouse, they are saying, let us bell the cat. Chuho ne ek plan banaya ki billi ke gale mein ghanti baan dete hai. But mudda ye hai ki wo to thik hai. Logic to sahi hai ki billi aegi ghanti bajegi hum sab bill mein chup jayenge. Lekin billi ke gale mein ghanti baanhega kaun? Who is going to bell the cat exactly at natural current zero? How the arc is going to be interrupted? So, what happens generally, especially for air blast circuit breaker? There is a phenomena called current chopping. What is this phenomena? Suppose this is the current, okay, and this is the arc voltage. Understand one thing about the arc voltage before we discuss all this. That arc voltage is given as arc current multiplied by the arc resistance. Now, this arc current is nothing but the fault current because if the arc is in between the contacts of the circuit breaker, fault is there and it is connected in series, circuit breaker is connected in series. So, arc current is approximately same as the fault current. If the fault current is increasing, arc current is increasing. If the arc current is increasing, the I square R losses in the arc are going to be increasing. It means what? There is going to be heat increasing there is going to be temperature increasing. Temperature increasing means R arc is going to be decreasing because it has a negative temperature coefficient of resistance. So, when the arc current is increasing, arc resistance is reducing. So, overall the arc voltage is going to be a constant value. Approximately, it is not exactly, it is a constant value. Is it clear? Okay. So, suppose your current is something like this. And suppose suddenly at this point, the current is made 0. 
when current is made zero because this is not the time when it is natural current zero so arc is having very high energy when it is high energy the arc will restrike again when the arc will restrike again again there will be arc current again it is struck down again there will be arc current like this so the current is chopped like this now because of this there is a possibility of very high voltages occurring across the contents of the circuit breaker. Understand one thing, when the arc current is positive, arc voltage is also positive because resistance is always positive. When current is positive, voltage is positive. When current is negative, voltage is negative with a constant value, with obviously a constant value. So, if you see, for positive half cycle of the current, this is suppose arc voltage. For negative, it is going to be negative like this. Now, the moment current becomes 0, voltage becomes very high, very high. Again current coming into the picture, again arc voltage. Again current is chopped, again there will be something like this. Are you getting that? <clears throat> now, these are voltage spikes which may be very dangerous and because of these very high voltages occurring across the contents of the circuit because there is a possibility that arc is going to restrike again and again. But this is just the trailer of the movie. This is not the real movie. The real movie is in this case, if at any point of time, if at any point of time, sorry, let me use another color. Oh, this wait. Now, there is a possibility that prospective voltage may occur. What is prospective voltage? Prospective voltage is the highest voltage which may come across the contacts of the circuit breaker and this is defined as I under root L by C. This is called as the prospective voltage. Now, this prospective voltage is so high, the board is not sufficient in terms of space, otherwise it is going to be very high. So, that it can completely damage the contacts of the circuit breaker and that is why we have to avoid this situation. Now, to avoid this situation, what we do? Suppose, this is the generator, this is the resistance, inductance and capacitance up to the contacts of the circuit breaker. This is generator, resistance, inductance, capacitance and this is the circuit breaker, this is the fault. Now, what we do to avoid this situation, we connect a resistance across this circuit breaker, okay, and this is called as a spark gap or a sphere gap spark gap or a sphere gap. So, whenever there is a high electric field, whenever there is a high electric field across the contents of the circuit breaker, what will happen? The R current here 
is going to be diverted, diverted through this resistance and the circuit breaker contacts are going to be saved. This is called as resistance switching. This is called as resistance switching. Why it is used? To avoid current chopping phenomena. To avoid current chopping phenomena and basically it is used for air blast circuit breakers. Because current chopping phenomena is going to be very severe in case of air blast circuit breakers. The value of this resistance R is simply given as 1 upon 2 under root L by C. So, solution is easy, just the concept you have to understand. So, what is going to be the value of this critical resistance? It is going to be 1 by 2 under root L. L is 1 Henry. C is 0 0.01 into the power minus 6. Let's solve this. how much you are getting. So, you must be getting somewhere around 5 kilo ohms, 5 kilo ohms, yes or no? See the next question. Determine the required MVA rating of the circuit breaker. For a system shown in figure, consider the grid as infinite bus, choose 6 MV as the base, the transformer and load impedance, everything is given. The impedance of each feeder is also given. Okay. Now, now there is a confusion in this question, let me tell you, it is a previous uh, year question, I think. Now, the confusion is, if the circuit breaker, we have to see the location, we do not know what is after this load. Okay, we do not know what is after this load. So, the one way of doing this problem is that you see what is the total Thevenin impedance or reactance or Thevenin impedance up to the circuit breaker location and find the short circuit MVA rating for the circuit breaker or you take this and the load in parallel, yes or no? Because total effective Thevenin impedance is going to be from this point of view load is coming parallel to this, yes or no? So, the nature of the load is not uh, basically, uh, okay, it is given, but it is not mentioned what is after that load, how it is connected in the circuit, okay? Because this is infinite bus, so this is okay, beyond this, there is no need, but this load has to be defined. So, how we are going to do this problem, let us see. So, suppose first we have to check in terms of the per unit uh, impedance what is given it is correct or not, okay. So, base he is asking to choose as 6 MVA. So, 6 MVA is okay for the transformer, okay, okay for the transformer. It is okay for the transformer, but for the load it has to be changed and Impedance of each feeder is given in terms of actual values. So, uh, let us see how we are going to do it. Suppose we are finding the Z equivalent, okay, Z equivalent from grid to the circuit breaker. This part is going to be how much? This is going to be the two feeders are connected in parallel. So, its actual is going to be 9 plus J18 divided by 2, okay. Now, for the transformer, if I have to write, this is given in per unit, okay. So, we have to change it in the actual value. Just give me one moment, let me check. Or better do it, uh, better do it in the per unit only. 
better do it in the per unit only otherwise it is going to be little complex. So, the feeder per unit impedance let us find one feeder is having 9 plus J 18, 9 plus J 18. Now, what is going to be base impedance? Base impedance is going to be voltage square upon MVA. So, the voltage base what we are going to take, suppose it is transformer is 33 oblique, 11 kilo volts, okay. So, the feeder side is going to be 33 kilo volt. So, it is 33 kilo volt square. Now, base is 6 MVA. It is given in the question to take base as 6 MVA. So, if you solve this, as for my reference, you must be getting somewhere around 0 0.049, 0 0.049 plus J and it is 0 0.09, 0 0.09 per unit. Now, for both the feeders to be connected in parallel, 0 0.049 plus J, 0 0.09 divided by 2, okay, this is going to be total Z equivalent. Then you have the transformer. Now, transformer is already given in 6 MVA, 33 oblique 11 kilo volt. So, directly you can pick it up 0 0.01, 0 0.01 plus J 0 0.08, J 0 0.08. Now, this is Z equivalent. This is Z equivalent from grid to the circuit breaker. What about the load? Now, for the load, this is given as 0 0.2, J 0 0.2. What is the new MVA? 6. What is the old MVA? It is 5800. It is very high. 5800. Now, voltage is going to be same, I think. So, it is okay. So, just calculate it. what you are getting. I think you must be getting somewhere around J 2.06, J 2.06, 10 to the power minus 4, 10 to the power minus 4. Now, this Z load and Z equivalent connected in parallel will give you the total Thevenin impedance as seen from the circuit breaker location. Now, you can find the short circuit MVA of the circuit breaker as MVA base on Z Thevenin. This is already given as 6 MVA. Let's find the value of ZTH and you will get it. I do not have the reference value for this. So, please solve this. But there is a confusion in this question that I explained in the starting part of the discussion that after this load, what should be there? Uh, Mr. Prashant, if you are not interested, uh, better you can leave. Okay, Mr. Prashant. See the next one. Again, this is the same question for the resistance switching. Similar question. 1 by 2 under root L by C. So, the inductance is given as 50 milli Henry up to the circuit breaker location. 50 milli divided by C that is uh, 0 0.05 10 to the power minus 6. Just solve this. I think you must be getting around 500 ohms, 500 ohms.
Prashant, uh, please uh, do not tell everyone about your uh, parents and your upbringing. If you are not interested, why you are wasting your time here? It is a New Year Eve, just enjoy your life. Whatever you want to do, you can do. But why you are telling the whole world that which family you belong and what your parents uh, brought up you with? So, come say come, dusro ki nahi to apne maabab ki respect karo. Thik hai. Agar aapko koi concept nahi aara hai, if you have any problem with the concept, you can ask me number of times. But the way you are talking, it only shows which family you are coming from. What your parents have translated into you over the years, okay? <clears throat> and don't take it lightly. If uh, if you're not aware, I am very much uh, serious over these issues. Okay, so if you don't want any trouble, so always uh, when you come to a public platform, always be in a healthy mindset. It's not something you are uh, with your friends and you can do anything. It may cause you trouble. It may cause you trouble. I'm not threatening. I'm just telling you the truth. Anyways, let us see the next question. There are some frustrated people in life. Now, see this question says, a 50 hertz 11 kilo volt three phase line has uh, the reactance is given as 50 ohms per phase and capacitance is given as 0 0.02 microfarad per phase up to the circuit breaker location. He is asking, what is the rate of rise of re-striking voltage up to the first peak? Now understand. Let me give you some idea about this. Now see how we are writing the re-striking voltage. Re-striking voltage we are writing as active recovery voltage 1 minus cos omega n t and this omega n is 1 upon under root L c. This is what we are defining as re-striking voltage. There is a difference between re-striking voltage and transient recovery voltage. When we are writing the transient recovery voltage, what is the difference between this? The difference is that transient recovery voltage is simply going to be Vm 1 minus cos omega n t. Again, omega n is 1 upon under root Lc. But Active recovery voltage is going to be there if you are talking about the re-striking voltage. Is it clear? So, if he is asking the rate of rise of re-striking voltage, just differentiate it with respect to time. So, what you will be getting? Rate of rise of, let me use another color. Rate of rise of re-striking voltage is going to be active recovery voltage. Now, one differentiation is going to be 0. Now, there is a minus. Cos omega n t is going to be minus sin omega n t, but there is one more omega n. So, rate of rise of re-striking voltage you will be getting as active recovery voltage into omega n and this is sin omega n t. Now, if you want what is the peak value of this, when it is going to be the peak value, the first peak, when this sin omega n t is going to be 1, sin omega n t becomes 1, when omega n t becomes pi by 2, when t becomes pi by 2 and uh, this omega n comes below, so it becomes 
1 upon omega n or t becomes pi by 2 under root L c. Is it clear everybody? Pi by 2 under root L c. So, basically he is asking the value of this, the first peak of rate of rise of free striking voltage, this is going to be active recovery voltage multiplied by omega n. So, basically in this question you have to find active recovery voltage. What is active recovery voltage? It is given as K1, K2, K3, V max, this is sin phi, where K1 is the ratio of recovery voltage divided by rated voltage, K2 is first pole to clear factor and basically it is 1.5 if ground is not involved in the fault. And it is going to be 1 if it is involved, if ground is involved in the fault. Now, K3 basically is going to be 1 if you are talking about the phase voltage, active recovery voltage, it is going to be root 3 if you are talking about the line voltage. That is the difference. So, what is going to be active recovery voltage here? Now, there is no information given for the recovery voltage. Let us take it one. Uh, the fault is including the ground or not, it is not mentioned. Okay. The type of fault is not given. So, let us assume it is uh, including the fault sorry including the ground so 1 and also phase value we are taking so 1 so k1 k2 k3 become as 1 now what is v max it is given as 11 kilo volt but 11 kilo volt is the line rms value and what we want the peak value of the phase so first we have to change it from line to phase divide by root 3 now this is the rms value of the phase multiply by root 2 to get the peak value this is how you change it so, active recovery voltage K1, K2, K3, V max, sin phi we are taking as 1. Suppose phi is 90, that is the fault power factor angle. So, active recovery voltage will be this. Just calculate this value. As for my reference, okay, I do not have a reference for this. You can, you can find this. Now, what is omega n? Omega n is 1 upon under root LC. What is L? Actually, he is giving you X. So, X is omega L. So, this is 50. Uh, it is going to be 2 pi F. So, it is 314. 2 pi is 3 pi 3.14 and F is 50 hertz. So, 3.14 multiplied by 100 is 314. So, 50 upon 314. And C, C is mentioned as 0. 0 2 and this is microfarad. So, 10 to the power minus 6. Just solve this, you will be getting the omega and multiply them and that will be your peak value of the rate of rise of recovery voltage. Is it clear everybody? Now, he is asking 50 hertz 11 kilo volt 3 phase alternator with earth neutral has a reactance of 15 ohms per phase and is connected to a bus bar through a circuit breaker. The distributed capacitance up to the circuit breaker between the phase and neutral is 0 0.05 microfarad, the average rate of rise of restriking voltage. What is the average value of rate of rise of restriking voltage? Understand this. If there is a sinusoidal quantity, suppose we are writing sin theta. So, its magnitude is 1, yes or no, magnitude is 1. So, what is going to be the average value? 
for half a cycle this area is 2 and this is pi 2 upon pi is going to be the average value for sin theta if it is a sin theta if it is a sin theta then what is the area now this is going to be a now in this case if you find the area for half cycle it is going to be 2a because the magnitude is a now so 2a divided by pi this is pi is going to be the average value so if you have a sinusoidal function this is the rate of rise of free striking voltage what is the peak value arv into omega n so what is the average value it is 2 times active recovery voltage omega n divided by pi that is it this you can write as 2 pi f n this is going to be pi pi cancel it becomes 4 active recovery voltage f n only thing you have to do in this question is to find the active recovery voltage at natural frequency how you are going to find the natural frequency omega n is 1 upon under root lc so what is going to be the fn it is 1 upon 2 pi 1 upon under root lc all the values given you find it and put the values and you will get the average value of rate of rise of restriking voltage let me check if i have a reference for this I do not have a reference for this. Let us see this question about the double line to ground fault. In this basically you have to apply the formula. Okay. Let me give you for double line to ground fault. What is the what is the equation? The double line to ground fault is something like this. So, this is A, this is B, this is C, suppose this is E A, this is E B, this is E C and this B and C suppose short circuited and some fault impedance is there like this. This is the current in B phase, this is the current in C phase and the A phase current we are assuming to be 0, suppose before the fault it is unloaded and this is going to be your fault current. This is going to be your fault current. Is it clear? Now, if you see the sequence networks, how they are connected, this is the zero sequence, this is the negative sequence, and this is the zero sequence. This is E A Z 1, this is V A 1, this is I A 1, this is Z 2, V A 2, this is I A 2, this is Z naught, this is 3 Z n and this is V A naught. This is I A naught and how they are connected positive and negative sequence they are connected in parallel directly and if the fault impedance is there then these parallel connections are going to be connected through the fault impedance This is 3 times Zf. This is 3 times Zf. This is the most generalistic 
sequence network for the double line to ground fault when the fault impedance is also present and neutral impedance is also present. Okay. And what is the fault current? The fault current is 3 times I A naught. So, what is the first step you are going to do? From the circuit, you can see only one source is there. So, first you find what is I A 1. Take the equivalent network, find what is I A 1. Once you find I A 1, you find I A naught by the current division rule. From the current division rule, you find I A naught and then all current is going to be 3 times I A naught. Is it clear? Now, suppose Zf is 0 and Zn is 0. Just see the question. Three phase star connected alternator is rated 30 MVA, 13.8 kV, and has following sequence reactances. So, positive, negative, and zero sequence values are given. The neutral of the alternator is solidly grounded. Solidly grounded means the neutral impedance is 0. Determine the alternator line currents when a double line to ground fault occurs on its terminals. Assume that the alternator is unloaded and is operating at the rated voltage when the fault occurs. So, fault impedance is also 0. Fault impedance is also 0. What is going to be I A 1 in that case? So, I A 1 is going to be E A upon Z 1. Now, you see here. Z1 is going to be in series with the parallel combination of this Z2 and Z0 because Z and Zf is 0. So, it is plus parallel combination of Z2 and Z0. From here, you can find what is Ia0 and from here, you can find the fault current as 3 times Ia0. Only formula, you have to put the values. Is it clear everybody? Is it clear or not? Just tell me yes or no in the comment section. See the next question. The next question is, the severity of line to ground and three phase faults on the terminals of the unloaded synchronous generator is to be same. So, basically he is saying the fault current for the LG fault and the fault current for three phase symmetrical fault is same. If the terminal voltages are 1 per unit Z1, Z2 same, Z0 this for the alternator, then the required inductive reactance, required inductive reactance for the neutral grounding is. What is the LG fault current? It is 3 times Ea upon Z1 plus Z2 plus Z0 plus 3Zn plus 3Zf if both neutral and fault impedance is there. What is three phase symmetrical fault current? It is simply Ea upon Z1. Now, just put the values. Fault impedance is not given. It is 0. Ea, Ea cancelled. It is 3Z1. Now, Z1, Z2 are same. 3 Z1, Z2 are same given in the question. So, it is going to be Z1 plus Z2 as 2 Z1 is equal to 2 Z1 plus Z0 plus Z0 plus 3 Zn. Now, put the values for Z1, Z2, Z0 and what is going to be Zn? It is going to be Xn. So, it becomes Z1 minus Z0 upon just put the values Z1 minus Z0 upon 3. What is Z1? 0 0.1. What is Z0? 0 0.05 divided by 3. Okay. <clears throat> so, I think you must be getting J0.0166. A is, A is the option you must be getting. This question you do it as part of your homework. Okay, I think you can do it. It is simply about the zero sequence network. So, thank you so much friends for joining me live in the discussion. I hope uh, you enjoyed the session and you learned a lot.
Now, important information once again I want to remind you that 3rd of January, Baiju's exam prep is starting the Maha Marathon series where all your subjects, all your uh, syllabus is going to be revised within just 12 days. So, do not miss these Maha Marathon sessions. Timings and all the details you will be finding in the description of this video. If you have any doubt regarding whatever we have discussed and if you want some more, you can reach out to my personal telegram channel on Baiju's exam prep that is electrical by Ashutosh Saxena that is my name. Okay, so thank you so much once again take care of yourself and because this is uh, the 31st December, the last day for 2022. The new year is on the mark. So, I wish you all a very happy new year and I wish that you get all the success, whatever you deserve, whatever you are making efforts for you, your family, all the best wishes. Thank you so much. Take care.